It combined 982 virtual and in-person attendees recently showed up to a county board meeting to demand the decommissioning of the recently constructed cargo airport located on Marquette Island. The attendees weren't necessarily opposed to cargo getting to the island, but rather the noise and deforestation that the airport was responsible for. In an effort to ensure he isn't chased back to Wisconsin, County Board President Philip with 1L works to convince the rest of the board to condemn the cargo airport in favor of cargo barges. This is an expensive mistake, and though he will lose his place on the board, he won't have to leave Nicolay Bay. In this episode, we're going to replace the cargo airport with barges and introduce a new mod and a set of assets to the build. And in the spirit of calling mulligans, I'm going to call a few more today as well, including fixes to the water system on Marquette Island, and we'll call a mulligan on most of the buildings in Marquette and use the Seaside Resorts Content Creator Pack in a way that I wish would have been allowed by default. And in general, this is going to be an episode where I respond to your feedback and implement a number of the suggestions you made in the comments for the previous episode. So stay tuned, we're going to be doing a lot. And if you don't mind me taking a mulligan from time to time, hit the like button. And if you prefer that I didn't, hit the like button for that too and let me know in the comments what you prefer. And if you have nothing to say, drop me an emoji that you feel represents what a mulligan truly is. But before we jump into the build, I want to tell you about today's video sponsor. You may not know this, but I'm a bit of a night owl. And when I'm watching my favorite YouTube videos and I don't want to wake up my family, I use my Raycons. Raycons everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever, offering 8 hours of playtime and 32 hours of battery life. And with their gel tips, they are so comfortable. These are without a doubt some of the most comfortable earbuds I've ever put in my ears. One of my favorite things about the earbuds is that they have different sound profiles for different types of music, which is great because I have very eclectic tastes. I listen to everything from Mac DeMarco to Vince Staples to my personal favorite, Master Plan Music. And of course, I listen to podcasts and the profiles make everything sound good. I also love the noise isolation and awareness modes. Isolation mode completely blocks out the sounds around you, while the awareness mode is handy when you're walking around a busy downtown area and want to know what's going on around you. If all of this sounds good to you, click on the link in the description box below or go to buyraycon.com slash cityplanner to save 15% off your Raycon purchase. Once again, that's buyraycon.com slash cityplanner. And a huge thank you to Raycon for sponsoring today's video. Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building Marquette Island in Nicolay Bay. And we've got a good one today. We are going to call a mulligan or maybe like six mulligans or 10 mulligans, a lot of mulligans, and it's gonna be based on your feedback. That's the thing, planning is collaborative, and this is going to be a collaborative build where we plan things together, and I'm really excited about that because I think that's where the best ideas and the best builds come from. So the very first thing that we're gonna do is take a look at that cargo airport and decommission it, but it's gonna be a two-part process. The very first thing that we need to do is find another way to bring cargo here. And the, you know we could just go ahead and add one of our cargo hubs over here, but that is a little overboard for this little island. If we take a look right now, the island has 124 people. So one comment I wanna highlight is Aurora Bordialis's comment. They said that they feel like having an airport or two on Marquette Island would be bad for the island and against one of the reasons that the island was actually developed in the way that it was, conservation. So a cargo dock would make more sense. And Jorge builds upon that, saying it would be expensive to fly all the cargo to the island when ships are much cheaper, and I completely agree with that. That said, Squawk the Penguin points out that there's an airport on this island in real life and they think it works, and that was one of the inspirations behind the airport, but that doesn't mean that's how we have to do it and we're going to do it a little bit differently. So I want to take some feedback that Seth left behind. Seth says, I know that this is meant to be a lightly modded build, avoiding too many workshop assets, but cargo barges would work so well to bring cargo across the bay. And here's the thing, I was unaware of that asset. And I don't know if I missed Biffa's episode where he covered it, but I want to cover it too. So I went to the workshop and I downloaded Bloody Penguin's original cargo barges mod and it's totally broken, <laughs> which stinks. And I think that they've retired, so that stinks as well. Thankfully, there is a modified version of this and it does work. So we're going to give it a shot. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out a good location for it. And this actually works as kind of a, a fairy hybrid. So we can reuse our ferry lines if we want, or just simply have all of our boats coming into one location, which I think is probably wise considering the utilization that this will get. So what we're gonna do is locate this right over here. 
and we'll kind of have a bunch of boating activity in this general area. So to do that, we're going to need to level some ground. I'm going to go ahead and clear the trees right away as well. I know that we're going to basically eliminate all of these. This is going to fundamentally change. And one of the ways it's going to change is I'm not just introducing cargo barges, but I will introduce those. This is what they are. It's a simple cargo barge and it's the cargo barge mod plazas and promenades fix that enables this to work. There are some interesting things you have to know about this to make it work, but we'll cover those in just a moment. In the meantime, I'm just going to place this and show you what a beautiful asset it is. And it's a modified version of a river barge, and I really like the way it looks. I think it's really spectacular, and I'm excited to use it today. So we are going to need to do something to make this blend in with the area more. And one of the things that I kept thinking about after the build was that the Plazas and Promenades DLC roads are really expensive looking and fancy. They fit in really well in a dense downtown area, but maybe not so well in this area. And then the other thing that really bothers me is the placement of the lights. It feels very transit mall, but it doesn't necessarily feel pedestrian street in a small town. So as a result, I did go digging in the workshop a bit and I found what I think is perfect. So I've added in two asset sets, park life paths as roads and network extension based zonable pedestrian paved roads. So all of these ones right here are our park life paths as roads. You can kind of tell what they are. There are some one ways if you really want one ways. And then this asset right here is a zonable pedestrian gravel road. And then we also have the zonable pedestrian paved road. I've used these in Clearwater County and they are based on the network extensions assets that look about the same. So excited to bring those into the build. And I think that the effect is going to be much better. So we're going to start with the campus park road connected and it's going to I think it's going to feel a lot more natural. OK, you might wonder why I did that now couple of reasons. First of all, I just wanted to do it. Second of all, we're going to convert some of our locked in roads to these. So we might as well get it right. The other thing I want to do is I want to use some of the amusement park roads in the downtown area. Look at this. This almost has a historic downtown vibe. So now we're over here and we're going to unlock this. So we'll go into the unified UI, use the network multi tool and unlock this big segment here. And then I will just use my picker and convert this over. I'm going to delete that little fake road that we put underneath there. We don't need it anymore. And then I will lock this. So the reason we don't need that little fake segment of road underneath there is because this is a road. It functions as a road. So we don't have to worry anymore about tricking the game mechanics. So because it is a road, we will have to restrict some vehicular movements. So that we will see a couple of cars spawn in. We'll take care of that near the end. Let's get some pavement through here. Oh, that is looking very, very good. And on the fixing front, I think we should also change the key wall. I went overboard. I, I, I will admit it and I should have just taken it a step back. There will be a couple of spots where maybe it makes sense to have this wide key, but it's it's we're not there yet. We're not there yet at all. And I'm converting this now because we're going to extend this all the way out to our barge over here in just a moment. I'm going to take this and we're going to bring this over here from the straight end. And then again, we'll need to unlock this segment here, upgrade this. Actually, I'm not so certain I want to do that. Yeah, let's undo this for a second. And maybe we have a couple of uh, amenities over here. Maybe that's how we handle cargo. We just allow a little bit of driving in this little area right here and nowhere else. And we need to get water here. So we'll put the water pipes underneath the road right where they belong. And I think right off the bat, I am going to think about the goods here and let's extend it out. Let's actually make this more of a substantial complex for getting goods. Right now we have everything over here and I think that we should really reconsider all of that. Rather than moving this small warehouse, I'm really considering going with one of these warehouse yards or maybe a couple of them. I think it'll fit a bit better. So yeah, let, let's go that route. So we'll bring this over here and I'm going to add two of these. Now I'd love to bring my spawn point over here, but I think it'll break my garbage. So that is a concern. This I'm going to empty. We'll need to come back over here and set these for commercial goods for both of them. 
and then we'll need to find a way to get power over here. And I'm really torn and I could use your help here. So part of me wants to move the recycling center, maybe right here and the pedestrian spawn point right here and consolidate everything on this portion of the island. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned. I'd have to figure out something with the water as well. I'm not 100% sure of the best way to address that. So why don't you let me know in the comments? I could go that route. My inclination is to go that route. But we've already got everything set up on the other side of the island and it is tucked away and hidden. So I want to know. It's always nice to have the feedback of others. So let me know what you think. Now I'm going to clean this up a bit and extend out our soil. And then as we're working on this, I think that we also need to remove this sand. Got to stay on top of this. And I've extended the concrete out as well so that it feels like a nice, cohesive and coherent uh, little facility right here. So with this, we are also going to need to set what resource we're bringing here. So we could choose any resource that we want. We're going to go with commercial goods and we will need to set this up uh, as soon as we get back. The reason why we have to set this up and right here it's set to empty is this is actually a small warehouse as well. So we don't actually need these warehouses, but I like the idea of having them here. So I'm going to set these to balanced and we should be good to go. Now I'm going to go over to the mainland because that's where we're going to need to focus next because this is part of a system. This is actually going to be taking goods from the mainland and ferrying them over here. So it's absolutely awesome. So I've been thinking about a lot of places where this could go and what I keep landing on is back here. So we need to modify our key wall a bit. We're going to be doing that here and at Marquette Island. So why not? So the idea here is going to be that we take this back, we extend a road out, we fill this area in, and we have our barge right here, our barge harbor. Now this is really tricky land to work with. So we're going to need to, first of all, turn our collision off for just a moment and really pay attention to what we're doing. And then I'm using the guidelines of this road, or maybe I'm actually using the building <laughs> to, to do this. So I'm going to make this connection here then I'm going to extend this out and then I'm going to delete this segment because the barge is going to need to snap onto here. So I'll come back in here, the barge harbor rather. And then we can just snap that into place, get rid of this. And now we're looking good. Let's make this look a little bit more professional though. We'll unlock this, copy this road. There we go. Now you're seeing a couple of interesting things flashing here. Obviously it needs water. That's not a big deal, but it also looks like it's not in a park district. That's actually not the correct symbol. So what it's actually doing is saying you didn't select a good to ship. So we'll select goods and that'll go away. And then we need to get water here as well. Okay. And then we need to fix our key wall here. So let's go ahead, use our picker. We'll select this and then we will go into the unified UI network multi-tool and then we'll use the parallel create parallel mode alt two. If you aren't a heathen like me. And then we will follow this. And I'm a heathen because I don't use a numpad. We'll just pull this in nice and tight. Hit enter and it lines up well. So the main thing that we have to do to fix this now is to get these two nodes to connect. So we're going to use our union mode. And then we select one node here and one there. And look at that monstrosity. It looks terrible. And you might be upset at this point, but don't be. We can fix it. And then after you play with these, you've got to make sure you find all the nodes and then control H them back into place. Otherwise you can have some weird lumpiness. And then for here, I'm going to drop this down just a little bit. So we're not popping up through, or I could alternatively, I will set this to be at the correct height, grab our dock here and just raise it up until this sinks in looking splendid. So lots of fiddling to get this to be right, but it's worth it in the end looks very clean and we will do our last little bit here. Oh, so clean, so clean. I like it a lot. So now we need to get this thing to be operational. So what we're going to do is draw a ferry route. So we'll just come through here and grab our ferry pathway. So here's something interesting about this mod. So Bloody Penguin's version of this mod and this version both have the same bug. So you, to get this working, if we were just to leave it as is right now, it's not working. You would think that maybe you need to draw a ferry pathway because that's what you do 
with a fairy, but that actually isn't necessary here. It spawns the barges automatically. What you have to do is delete a small segment of your fairy pathway on either side. And now it should start spawning barges. So I'm gonna speed this up for a minute and see if it's working. Okay, this is the very first sign that it's working. We've got donut trucks swinging by here, dropping things off. That means that we will spawn a barge soon. And there we go. We've got barge one and it's going to the simple barge harbor way over here. So now I want to finish off the key wall. So I'm going to use the picker to select it. And then we will go into the unified UI and use our create parallel mode again. And we can use this path here to create this. No problem. And I'm going to set this back so that it lines up with our new harbor. But then we're going to change something. Let's use our create parallel again. And I want this to be at the, about the same distance as this one. So right there, that's pretty darn good. And now I'm going to use move it, hold down M, alt, and we'll slide this back. And it's going to get ugly, but it's going to be okay. Now we will union those nodes. Use move it again to control H this up to here. And it's looking a lot better. We've got an inverted node here. And again, that is the network multi-tool invert segments or control nine. Click that, hit it up and it looks good. And there might be an extra node through here. It looks like there is one. We unload that node and now our scrunched up wall is looking a ton better. I'm going to clean up the sand because there was a couple spots where we have sand issues. And then we'll also clean up around the coast. It's creating some interesting issues now. So select the coast height, pull that right in. Looking very good, looking very good. And with this all taken care of, we've got a way to get here and we've got a way to get cargo here. We need to decommission our old airport and reforest this. And you know, I was thinking, I went to the Wisconsin Dells this past summer and I went on a duck tour with my daughters. And one of the things that you do on a duck tour, and a duck, uh, this is a duck. They are uh, this these really interesting vehicles that can go, uh, they, they're boats and they're also vehicles i believe they served in world war ii so and they've been limping them along in the wisconsin dells so that we can go on these fun little tours and these are this is all in reforested land and they planted the trees in a row and they even crack jokes about it in the tour because it looks so unnatural and bizarre i'm not 100 percent sure why it's like that in the wisconsin dells but it is a tall tale sign of a forestry industry in many other locations so that's my guess is the reason why it looks like that there and i thought about doing that here but uh maybe we just need to to heal <laughs> and the way that we heal is to not not rehash <laughs> so we're gonna plant things here and we're gonna make it look like a dense forest the one thing i do want to fix is there are some scars here in this case it's just the airport <laughs> me, me screwing things up with the airport brush so I'll just smooth some of this out. This is considerably less jagged and flatter than anywhere else, but this did happen. It's a thing and we will learn and grow from it, but it did happen. So it makes sense that the terrain would be a bit scarred from it. There we go. We've hidden our mistakes, <laughs> except for this one. And this is one that was pointed out a number of times in the comments that uh, we are potentially polluting our groundwater here and everyone could be getting sick. So let's check this out. And we got so lucky. <laughs> Apparently our pumping station is just ever so slightly far enough outside of this cone of, of dirtiness. And it's not actually, I, I don't know why it's not polluted. It will be polluted at some point in the future. So let's put this closer to town And then we've got this small warehouse over here. I really want it to empty. I don't know that it can. It's kind of screwing up because it's in the pedestrian district. That's something that was brought up in the comments as well. I'm just going to eliminate it. it it's not the height of realism, but we're going to we're going to go with it. 
Okay, and then the last thing that was brought up in the comments that I thought was really smart that I can't believe I missed is I placed the inland water treatment plant above where our water is. So this would require a pump to get it up here. That's likely not the very best way of doing this in a poorer community, which is what this would be right now. You'd want to place it at a minimum at the level that we're at with the with the water. This is all of this is gravity uh, that is feeding this. So we wouldn't want to get wild about it. And there we go. We can have a gravity solution here rather than a pumping solution. No harm, no foul. Looking good there. It's funny. There's high garbage traffic. So clearly we may need to put a, a garbage spawn point at some point in the future. Thankfully, our reserves here are not too high. We're doing okay. Okay, and next up, I want to address getting people to the island. So we've got this ferry and that's fine. And people could drive to the ferry. They could take the bus. But if you were coming in from another community, you're really forced to take inner city bus or drive down the highway. And that's less than ideal. And this is something that bronze player pointed out day one of asking for Evergreen to get a passenger rail terminal. And I completely agree. This is something that I meant to do a while back. This is something that I think that the citizens would have been lobbying for. This would be a very difficult lift today in, in today's environment. But I do think that it's something that uh, the community would be screaming out for. So we're going to add it. We're going to pretend that there's no legislative opposition uh, and that it's a difficult thing to get a passenger rail station. We're just going to go for it. We'll uh, take a, a couple of liberties here. And there are not many places where we could place this. I know that there have been some suggestions that maybe we just place it over here, put it side by side with this. That's not going to work. We don't have the space for it. And truthfully, it would conflict with the existing lines here. I think what makes more, more sense is placing it right here off a spur track. So what we're going to do is clear some trees here and add it right here. But we can't just have an inner city passenger rail station and call it a day. We also need to have a bus route to get people from this station to our transfer facility and likely to the ferry. And I really think it's going to boost our ferry activity. And I just kind of want to see right now. <laughs> mm, maybe we don't need boosted ferry activity, actually. We've got 135 people waiting. So what we need to do is actually add a couple more ferries. And based on what we have here, I know that we can justify at least three ferries running at the same time, probably four. We're going to run four just for a bit of extra overhead. And now let's come back over here and think about our passenger rail. Okay, and I'm going to start out with this two lane road with median. We're going to build our passenger rail station. So what we're going to do is make sure that we have all of our snap twos on. I'm going to line this up really nicely right here. And then we'll run this right across. I'm hoping that that's a good distance away. And we've got a few different passenger rail options. So we could go with one of our traditional stations. So either this train station here or our elevated train station. I think that we're going to go with our historical train station. To me, this is a little bit better of a fit. Kind of goes with the vibe that we're going to be establishing in Marquette Island. And it just feels a bit more quaint. Now, because we're building this, we don't have any parking. So I will need to build some parking as well, but that's totally fine. And it looks like our contours head up. We will fix this with the network multi-tool. Not overly concerned. I'm going to head about 20 units back and then we'll go 20 more units to pull it down. And then we're going to use network multi-tool pretty heavily here to get this to, to be totally right. We'll start out with our slope. You can see there's a pretty big jump there. It might not seem too bad, but it's a train. You really need to have very slight slopes and that is much better. And then I want to feather out the terrain here just a bit. Go with a larger brush size and we'll just taper this off. And then we need a bit of water. And then I believe our power jumps, so we're good there. And then we need our parking lot. So we'll just use our CPP parking lots. We're looking pretty darn good there. I like the way that this is turning out. I think it, there's some value in a pedestrian connection here as well. This is going to be 
deep and I assume that this would not actually just be a, a really, uh, really steep sidewalk, but it would rather be steps or something of that nature. I'll see if I can fix it at all. So I'll use my slope terrain tool, make this a little bit smaller, maybe even single. Right mouse click up here, left click at the bottom, slope it up. That's a little better. It's not that bad. All right, we'll go with it. We'll go with it. And now I want to establish that bus route. So what we're going to do here is have a stop basically right in front. Then we'll go over to the ferry line right in front there, right over here to our depot. And then right back here. Very simple route. We don't need to get crazy with it. We just need it to work. And I am going to make sure that we allow inner city trains here, which we do. And I'm going to let this run for a minute because we're going to want to see what the, that bus route needs and how this station's functioning. And um, before we do that, why don't we add some of the landscaping back here? I did remove a bit. Oh, looking good. And we've got our parking filling up, which, you know, we can have different ideas about if that's good or not. Here's the thing. When you're planning, you plan for the people who are going to be using this and the people are likely going to, especially on something like this, they're going to probably wish to drive to this facility. They're going out of town for a few days. They want a secure facility where they can park uh, and then transit for other folks, maybe even bikes. I don't know if we have good bike access here. We do not. So that would be the other thing that I would contemplate. We could potentially extend this bike facility to come out here as well, but for the time being, I think that we're good. We've added a crossing here so that folks could leave the parking lot and go directly into the train station. Let's watch this thing fill up and see how our bus routes do it. And there we are. Our first train is leaving and it has 91 out of 400 passengers. It felt like more than that. <laughs> I'm going to add a fence behind here and some landscaping just to clean it up and then we will move on. Okay, just a little something to jazz it up back here, make it look a little bit nicer and uh, maybe prevent some of that looking at the cargo uh, trains passing. I think especially with how long it takes for one of the passenger rails to get here, it's kind of discouraging to see all of those freight trains going past you. But I really like this. It's simple and it works well. It's effective. I dig it. And of course, I get stuck on landscaping. So there we go. One last thing we have to do is look at this bus and see how it's doing. Line details, seven buses being thrown at it. That's way too much. And I think that two could probably do the trick based on the numbers I'm seeing. So we'll just drop this down and we should be good to go. Guessing this is at the ferry. Oh, it's actually transferring here at a little transfer facility. That's fine too. Looking good, and there's parking spots available, which means to me that folks are taking transit. I feel good about that. And looking at our ferry depot, I just want to look at this as well. Did we fix this? It honestly seems like we could have one more boat here. And I'm wondering if the popularity of all these services is just growing as we continue to improve things. So things are looking good here. I'm loving this. And I've shown you these before. But now we, it's, it's the time that we clean it up. So we node controller these to make them look nice and clean. And then we need to focus on areas like this. So this transition looks great, but some transitions will look less great. This one looks pretty terrible. There's a couple of ways that we could fix this. We could just select this and switch this to a middle. That's not bad. That looks pretty good. The other option that we, we could turn this into a bend. Now this shrinks up the wider one to be the width of the narrower one. We could even pull these next to each other if we wanted to. That's not bad. I think I'm going to take option three though. And we're going to use this gravel zonable pedestrian road and we'll pull that back. And one of the reasons I want this is there are some folks parking up here and then walking down here. They just have a car. I don't, I don't even know what they would do with it here. <laughs> All of the, uh, all six of these cars right here, <laughs> we'll get rid of them. And now I'm just going to upgrade basically all the way down to here. And there we go. So here's the thing. I've added all of these new facilities and look at that. That is a nice transition. Seems like we just started paving. I like that. So 
we've added all of these, but by default, there's a couple of interesting things that we have going on. First of all, cars can drive down these. So that's not good. So let's go into TMPE. We'll go into vehicle restrictions. And right off the bat, we just take these. I'm going to hold down shift and get rid of cars. No cars. And we just kind of go down the list. Now that should cover all of the cars here. I'm going to say no freight, no freight, no garbage. Oh, we are going to have a garbage problem if we don't make sure that this is in the pedestrian district. So I'm going to grab this and put it inside the pedestrian district. So now it can teleport the garbage out of here. So that is good. And we should be in a good place. The only thing that we would potentially want to do is really think about our lighting situation especially on this downtown area. It just looks kind of bad. It looks like an amusement park. So what we can do is come into network skins. So I just use picker selected this road and then I can come in here and network skins is different than Bob. So if I were to use Bob to do this, it would change the entire network. If I use network skins, it changes one segment and I can have different sets of lights in different parts of the city and really customize this for this area. So here, I'm gonna try a couple of things. There's our nice street lamps. I like that. The nice thing is you can combine these. So let's say you lose track of this, you don't have this selected. You can go back into picker, select this, and it will upgrade this. It'll retain this. And there's a ton that you can do with this. You can change the spacing. So let's say we go into night and there's a lot open. I know, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. We go into night and we realize, boy, oh boy, that is bright. And when we look at our cones, our distances, not only are we overlapping, but it's just too much. We can increase this to 30 meters or 40. That's too much. We have those dark zones that would never fly. I think 30 is about as far apart as we can get. If we were trying to save money, Colorado Springs it, that's, this is how we could do it. <laughs> and I don't know if I've told the Colorado Springs story before, but they decided to reduce their lighting budget, removing one out of every three light bulbs to save money. And they saved about $1.25 million per year, but that emboldened thieves to actually start taking some of the copper from the lights, and that cost the city approximately $5 million to replace. And this was one of a number of uh, highly controversial measures that they uh, implemented in an effort to reverse a major budget deficit, which they did manage to do, but ultimately the experiment ended because people like a government that's stable and that was a very unstable government. And if this story has piqued your curiosity, I will link to a political article below that actually talks about how this went and interviews some of the people who were taking part in it. So it's a very interesting story. Okay, so I think we're looking pretty good with our streets but we're not looking so good with our buildings. So we've got a couple of great buildings. We've got this historic looking fire station, this historic looking police station, this historic looking library. And then we have all of these buildings that don't make sense. I'd like to have a theme here. And I think this is something that the developers would have gone for. And a developer has the opportunity up front to set some restrictive covenants on design. And that is something I think would have absolutely happened here. Now, I want to use the Seaside Resorts Content Creator Pack to add a bunch of buildings to this community. In fact, I'd like to use almost exclusively that Content Creator Pack, but there's one problem. They are all unique buildings. They are all hotels and they provide an entertainment value and attract people, but you can only place one. So I place that one, no more for me. That's it, just that one. So here's the interesting thing. They do have different colors for this building. So if I get rid of this and I place it again, you can see, look at this, it's a different color. <laughs> so we've got this one here. Why can't I do something different? Why can't I have more than one of these? It's a limitation. Unique buildings can only be placed once. So you might just give up there and say, well, at least I have like 40 of these things. Good enough. Not good enough. Not good enough for me. What I want to do is really create this entire city rather than using the European suburbia buildings, which a number of people pointed out in the comments they didn't like. I agree. I think that we should make this look more like Mackinac with some of these historic looking buildings. So I am going to set all of these out in a secret undisclosed location. 
and we'll be right back. All right, so I've laid these all out and what I want you to get a feel for right now is the difference in size. So some of these buildings, like this one, this is clearly a resort. This is clearly a resort, so is this one. But some of these, some of these, maybe this is a downtown building. Maybe this is actually a mixed use building with some commercial at the bottom and some residential up top. Maybe these are mansions. Maybe these are homes. And that is where I want your imagination to go to because we're gonna take some of these buildings and start to establish what they are on Marquette Island. And the way that we're gonna do that is by going into Rico, selecting a building, going into our Rico settings, and then we're gonna add a local version. Now for this particular building, to me, this looks like a house. So we can add this as a house. They have it currently set to a high density residential building. I'm gonna go with low density and then I'm gonna set this to level three. And then I'm good with this. I don't want it to be growable because I don't want it to randomly show up throughout the build, but I do want to be able to place it. I'll use Rico to place it myself and then we'll save and apply changes. Now this one is immediately now no longer a unique building. Look at this, it has one household if we take a look here. So I'm going to do this with the rest of these. Uh, there are commercial buildings as well. This to me looks commercial. We'll click on this one. We'll do the same thing. Add a local, set this to be a commercial building. Again, low. And here's where it says use realistic population mod. I don't have that. So if we're going to do this, I need to set it up myself. So I'm going to say that maybe it has four uneducated jobs, two educated, two well-educated and one highly educated. And then I'll save and apply locally. So I'm going to go through the rest of these and do the same thing for all of the larger buildings. I'm going to leave them. And these are absolutely buildings that we should work into a resort but we have the opportunity to create our town with these other buildings. And here's the nice thing. Now that I've added this one, for instance, that this is a residential building, I can place as many of these as I want now. And here's the other great thing. They change colors. <laughs> so here we are. We've got our seaside resorts buildings. They're changing colors. They're residential. They make a ton more sense, in my opinion. So this is what we're going to use throughout this entire island. No more European suburbia. We're going to use seaside resorts. It's going to be awesome. Well, I'm going to convert these all over and we'll be right back. Okay, so I've gone through all of these and here's what I've come up with. These are our residential buildings and this one's in the road. That's awesome. <laughs> these are our commercial buildings. We have one office and then the rest of these back here are all resorts. So to me, that's a better layout. Now maybe you can tell where we are. We're just above the village. So let's pop on down here and eliminate everything. Maybe the first thing we should do is actually turn off European suburbia. We'll do default style and we're done zoning. So I know that for some folks that will be disappointing, but I think in this area to get our best outcome, we need to plop. I'm not pleased with how this has turned out and I don't think that many of you are. I'm going to keep one building. <laughs> We've got this little market here. I'm going to spin it around so it makes sense, but I like this one. And while we're going back to the drawing board and rethinking about all this stuff, why don't we also think about some services that maybe we missed? And the one that I'm thinking about in particular is the post office. And there we go. That is looking much, much better in my opinion. So now we should be able to go into find it. So if I go into just Rico now, all of these buildings that I just set up are there. So I can narrow it down to just residential of the, the different densities, just commercial and then office. So I'm going to get rid of all of this. We don't need it anymore. And then we'll come right down here. And I want to start out with our downtown buildings and we'll narrow it down to our two different types of commercial buildings, holding down shift so I can select both of those. And now basically what I want to do is just kind of come down here and we can use our randomize button. And look at that. Now we've got to do some work here, obviously holding down M to use move it and pulling some of these up. Like why not pull this up right to the sidewalk, drop it down so folks could actually walk directly in here. But my goodness, this feels a ton more authentic 
than what was there previously. We've even managed to retain one of these buildings and we can do this for all of them. So that's what I'm gonna do, pull them right up to the road. There we go, oh my goodness. <laughs> I like that so much more. And I'm gonna throw an office in as well. We'll put the off to the side. And then use move it to move this path. Truthfully, this path isn't super necessary anymore. It's a legacy. We'll go with it. Then we'll scoot this over. So for our residential, I'm gonna do the same thing. Highlight all of these, and then we're just gonna randomize these. Some of these will be high density, some will not, and it's gonna be fine either way. Let's give them enough space to exist. For the high density, maybe we actually put a few of these along the coast. Yeah, I really, really like this. So we are going to get rid of some of these trees and we'll wrap this around here. And then I wanna add one more row of homes behind this. I think that that would be natural. In between the homes, we're gonna add a high-speed bike path as well. And to make each of these look a little bit better, I think that we need to place a tree somewhere in the vicinity of the home. There we go, there we go. Let's zoom in and see how this feels at the street level. Yeah, this feels special. This feels a lot more special than it felt before. So these are absolutely beautiful assets and to use them in a way where we can actually create a functional city is pretty special. So we can take a look now and see that we've got some folks moving in here. It's probably a lot less than before, 232. So we've got some work to go. And there are a couple of vanilla assets that fit in nicely as well. I don't think we're gonna go there today, but we might get there in the next one. Okay, now I wanna add one more level of housing behind this. We should look at our contours because that's gonna be our biggest limiting factor here. So let's go ahead and grab a contour here. And I don't wanna go too many meters up, but I want this to feel like it is above. So we'll get nice views of the water up here as well. I, I could use the parallel road tool. I'm just gonna do this instead. We will freeform this and make it fit within our terrain. And then once again, residential all up and down here. And then I'm gonna run a row of trees behind these. Ah, actually, no, I'm going to set that bike path up. Let's get some water pipes underneath our road right where they belong first. Oh, I'm really digging this. This is turning out really, really well. Uh, and so we're gonna run a bike path back here and this will become part of a grand network in the future. Oh, I love this so much. <laughs> this is great. So now what we're gonna do is we've got a really lumpy and bumpy path network here and that's not gonna work for us. So I'm gonna take the brush size down to 15, strength all the way up and let's level this. Okay, this is looking absolutely spectacular, but we can't forget to add nodes right here and make them at the minimum custom so people can cross here. There we go, there we go. So now this could be used, there's places to get on and off. We could probably stand to add just a couple more connections through, things like that. And this will eventually be a super valuable network. This is gonna be so direct and so fast, it is amazing. I love that. So one of the things that you're seeing pop up 
nonstop are these little signs that say the crime rate is high. There's a reason for that and we're gonna resolve it in just a moment, but I want to introduce something that I think is gonna be really fun. So we're gonna introduce transit to this island. And I know that there were a number of people that said, oh, I really would like to see you add in a tram network. We might do that in the future. But I'm not fully convinced that it's the right choice here. What we're gonna do is something a little bit different. So I wanna run this road up to a flat patch. Now that we have this way up here, we're gonna place this riding stable right up here. And you might wonder why? That's weird, riding stable with a million dollar view? Neat, it's more than a riding stable because we now have this invisible bus depot. And we're gonna place that right about here and now we can spawn buses from this, which might sound bizarre, but just stick with me. I think you're gonna like this. Okay, so now we've got this connected and this little square here, this is an invisible bus depot. You could spawn buses here, no problem. So it's very cool. What I wanna do now is create a new bus route. So we'll start here. You can see it's kind of a little finicky on these pedestrian pads that we're using. Okay, so this is not the greatest route. It can't go in all the directions that we might expect it to. And I can't add stops everywhere due to the network I'm using but it's gonna be fine. It's gonna do the trick for what we're gonna do, and that is because we're gonna have horses. <laughs> so that might sound crazy, but check this out. We will set this to horse, bus. And here's the thing to know about this. Again, just like bus lines, whatever color you have for your line, that's what the horses will be as well. So the horses are now gonna spawn up here, or these will spawn up here. I'm gonna speed this up so they can return to the bus depot. And now we have these. Now, the it's not perfect. <laughs> I will readily admit that if we take a look at these, the legs don't move, but they're not bad. They're not bad. The capacity is a little crazy. We're gonna fix that. And ultimately, they're not gonna work right because of uh, one particular issue. But let's attack things one at a time. I want to adjust the horses themselves. So I'm going to go into advanced vehicle options and now when you add this vehicle it will add in the ability to ride a horse as a bike i didn't like that so i disabled that when i saw it back in evergreen what you can do though is now go to bus and at the very bottom you have horse bus the color variations don't matter again it's going to adopt the color that the bus route is but you can change the capacity here and i'm going to change it to six and then you their maximum speed i guess it you know Maybe it should be slower. It doesn't really matter though. And the reason why it doesn't really matter is all of these roads right here that we're using have super low speed limits. So if we take a look at these five miles per hour or 10 kilometers, so it's painfully slow. And what you'll see is that you can walk faster than the horse can take you, which means that we will get absolutely no ridership. And watch them slow down. They'll come to a crawl here. And if we go to normal game speed, this is the speed that they're actually at. And I wanna see if they catch up to that lady down there. They will not. So there's a bunch of pedestrians. They're gonna move faster. Don't know why they're going down here. Oh, they're starting over. Okay, so they loop around here and then begin their route. But you can see that this Faith White is gonna walk faster than the transit vehicle. So ultimately what that means is she'll never take it. So we need to adjust a few things. First of all, I see cars. We didn't want cars. So we're going to go through, go into TMPE and adjust our vehicles on here. And we're gonna hold down shift, and select cars to get rid of them. There we go. So no cars there. We have no freight coming down here. So that should serve us well. And they're struggling to get, they're struggling to get goods here. That's surprising. So I'm going to try something else. 
we'll go back to the drawing board a bit. And what I'm going to do is grab our pedestrian service point and we will just move it over here. And now I'm curious if I do this, will this resolve all of our issues? So basically I'm allowing driving to occur to the spawn point and hopefully that will allow us to get our goods in here and teleport them out of here. Okay, so let's see, are we still short on goods over here? We are not. We still got this one building abandoning, but it looks like all of our other buildings are doing okay. So now that we've resolved that, we've got all of these police issues and that all comes down to speed. So if we look again, it's that low speed and I'm gonna take this and make it 20. And I think 20, it's still slow, but hopefully that makes our transit vehicles at least competitive with walking. And I'm pausing it because I wanna show you what ridership is like. It's been going for a little while now and you might expect that we've got a couple of riders, just a, maybe a couple. My guess is we have none. <laughs> so let's take a look. Route 10, five stops, zero passengers. It's too slow. It's way too slow. So that's the problem right there. So hopefully this fixes it. I'm going to let this go for a minute, and I think that we're going to start to see some ridership. Okay, and there we go. We've got a couple of uh, folks utilizing this. <laughs> We've actually got 10 people. We've got 10 out of 6 on there. They're getting, getting off. they got to get on the ferry. So I guess whatever works for you. But that, to me... If anyone knows of a horse bus <laughs> that has moving legs, let me know. But for the time being, I'm pretty okay with this. And for all of the things that I've added to the build, I'm going to I'm gonna add those to the Nicolay Bay collection. And I'll leave links in the video description if you don't want to go all the way to the collection. I totally get it. And then it's just kind of finessing some of these things. There's not much I can do about it this <laughs> short of adding a node right about here grabbing this node and lining it up there and then control hing to here and now we've got a lot of terrain challenges right here we can adjust it like that and that's probably the best we could do and then again of course we are still needing to do this as well slope this up that's not bad that's not bad at all feeling good about that and the horse is too so I think that we have done a ton today. And for the, the Seaside uh, content creator pack uh, asset utilization, I want to give KJ Fur a huge shout out. So I was thinking about this, but sometimes you need that push and KJ provided that push. And I really appreciate it. I think that this is beautiful. And the only way that we are really going to be able to take inventory of what we've done is to have a brief city tour. Okay, and that was a great city tour. And just look at this. This feels like it has a level of depth that the previous build of this community just didn't have. And I get it, there's a lot of repetition in terms of the buildings, but that's the thing. In a development, there's actually a lot of repetition. And when things are initially built, a lot of times they'll look the same. And over the years, they'll begin to look different as people add on to their homes, paint, uh, do different things that change the character of their homes. But starting out, there might only be a couple of different elevations of a building and you end up with a lot of buildings that look very similar, different colors, slightly different architecture. And I'm okay with it. I think that this looks very classy, but uh, we're gonna do more. I think we can add more to this. And I think we need to give some thought to buildings like this one, which I thought was gonna blend more, but it does look 
a little more colorful, a little more cartoony. Let me know in the comments how you feel about that one. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think the city in general is starting to look really good. And uh, I can't wait to continue building this with you. I really hope that you've enjoyed today's build. If you did, please hit the like button. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I really can't wait to see you in the next one. Thanks for hanging out. It's a really a privilege to bring these videos to you. Take care. Bye-bye.